Yes. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. For today, we are going to, to take this uh, course, which is community interpreting, and we are going to see what is this community interpreting and how can we uh, elaborate it and explain it in a way that's simple for all of you and understandable for all. So here, community interpreting, it's a kind of a scoop that will define some kind of interpreting. And here in community interpreting, we have many types for interpreting. Let's say, for example, we have uh, legal interpreting, it goes under community. We have uh, immigration interpreting, we have community interpreting, we have uh, healthcare interpreting, we have um, immigrants and legal asylums interpreting. So there are many types goes under community interpreting. As we can see here, it also include uh, escort interpreting, culture interpreting, uh, liaison interpreting, public service, legal, dialogue, interpreting, and many more. So here we have the ad hoc interpreting, community interpreting, and business oriented interpreting. So for the ad hoc inter interpreting, which is sometimes can be the consecutive interpreter. So when there is a kind of a sudden need for the interpreter, it was suddenly the just the client, he just called you and he said, okay, are you available? Maybe we need you as interpreter after half an hour. Or are you available to come now? Right now we need you to, to do interpretation because now we are at the middle of a meeting and so, so and so, and we need, as, we need interpreter. If you, can, if you can make it, please come now. So this is what we call as ad hoc interpreter. We have also a community oriented interpreter, community oriented as it's community based interpreting, as we just explained. We have the medical interpreting, sometimes it's healthcare interpreting. When you, when you need to go as interpreter, when you need to visit or to go with the client to the hospital or to the healthcare centers, or uh, uh, sometimes maybe you need to go to the um, insurance office, all these goes under a kind of community interpreting. We have also the legal interpreting. We have uh, the immigration offices interpreting. Here we have the second part, which is business oriented interpreting. Also business oriented can goes under community interpreting because normally it's a business, a kind of business oriented that relates to helping or serving the community. For example, if someone, he want to rent a house or he want to purchase a house, so he need, a, he need interpreter. If someone, he want to go for um, purchasing life insurance, this is also goes under business oriented, but it's still under the umbrella of uh, community interpreting. Legal interpreting also, we have the legal, we have the medical, we have the public service interpreting. All those goes under community oriented interpreting because it's community. So at, at the end, it goes under community interpreting. For the legal interpreting, it's often associated with the court interpreting, lawyer offices, maybe some lawyer, they want to sign a kind of agreement between the lawyer and the uh, other staff or other people, they want to sign agreement or some lawyers, they want to do business with some uh, people. So they want to, uh, to have interpreter in order to interpret from language A to language B. In some countries, interpreter can do both. In others, there is a strict separation between community and legal interpretation. In some countries, legal interpreting can, can go under community interpreting. However, in some other countries, like here in Malaysia, legal interpretation is considered separate type or separate modes of interpreting. It's not related to community. The definition depends on the sitting here. So we have the formal and we have the informal. We have the formal and informal. Normally, the community interpreting is informal. 
the community interpreting normally is informal. However, the legal interpreting is always formal, always is formal, because you need to use, you need to understand, uh, you need to uh, understand and use the, the legal jargons, the legal terminology, the legal glossaries, so you have to be acquaintance about all of these terms and uh, jargons. Medical interpreter, medical interpreter also in Malaysia, it goes under, uh, it's, uh, it's not like uh, legal interpreting. However, in Malaysia, medical interpreting goes under community interpreting. So medical interpreting, it's still under community interpreting. And here you need to discuss a kind of medical report from the doctor, from the patient side. You need to provide some interpretation, sometimes could be consecutive or simultaneous interpreting for the patient or for the doctor report sometime for the medical report or for the uh, certificates or whatever, or surat, official surats, you need to provide translation or interpretation sometime. Also in medical interpretation, we can include what we call the site interpreting. Sometimes you need to do site interpreting for the medical uh, interaction between the doctor and patient. So may, the, the doctor may give you a kind of uh, certificate or letter you need to interpret that letter using site interpreting from language A to language B. Let's say the letter is written in Malay and you need to interpret it into Arabic because the patient is Arab, he's from Arabic background. So you need to interpret it into Arabic for him. Or let's say the patient may, may be from other countries. So you need to interpret it from Malay into English. This is where we, we need to use a site interpreting during the community or during the medical interpreting, the site technique. A quality interpreting is of the utmost important. Okay, here in the medical interpreting, we say a quality of interpreting is the utmost need or the utmost important. Why do you think? Why do you think a quality interpreting is the utmost need or the utmost important? for community interpreting, especially in medical. Yes, exactly. It carries someone life. So if you miss to interpret one or two or few words from English to that language, the patient may not understand what the doctor means. For example, if the doctor asks, Okay, I will subscribe this medicine for you. This medicine you need to take, you need to take this medicine, it's a kind of capsules. You need to take three capsules per day. This is for this medicine. However, for that medicine, which is in the red color, you need to take it five times a day. Okay, and this medicine, the, the red color one, this one is a kind for, it's a tablet for, it's a tablet for asthma. So because you have a cure, acute asthma, which is a critical asthma, you have to take it five, five times a day. And please be patient, please uh, uh, take care that you, when you take this medicine, it must, it must be after food or after meal. And before that, I wanna ask you, do you have allergy to this medicine? Do you have any allergy to any kind of medicine before? So. When you interpret this kind of discussion or this kind of conversation between the doctor and patient, if you miss to interpret, for example, this type of medicine or this type of capsule, you need to take it five times a day because it's for your acute, for acute asthma. And it's very important. You need also to interpret that when the doctor asks, do you have a kind of a, a, a sensitivity? Or do you have a kind of, do you have allergy to this medicine? Or do you have allergy to any other medicines? Do you have a history of allergies to any other medicine? If you miss to interpret that and the patient, he really has allergy for many times of medicine and he took this medicine and this medicine affect his allergy, maybe in two or three days, the patient will getting more trouble or maybe that visa trouble could lead him to ICU, which is, which is intensive care unit, if not uh, dead. 
So all of these things could happen to the patient just because the interpreter, he missed to interpret very few words, which is really and critically important. Few words that has critical importance. If you miss to interpret, this could lead uh, to a very uh, problematic situation for the patient. This is for community interpreting and in the uh, medical mood. So also here we have the public service interpreting. This public service, we use it normally for the public service officers. Let's say, for example, for immigration officer, for immigration, immigration here is a public service. So anyone can go to immigration if he has any issue with the immigration. So this is kind of public service interpreting. Also for healthcare offices, healthcare centers, it's a public service. Insurance offices, insurance centers, public service. Housing offices, if you wanna go for housing to, to purchase a house or to rent a house, this is public service interpreting. It need, it need an, an interpreter sometimes. So here for the legal, it's just, uh, we are zooming in for a uh, legal interpreting, as we mentioned, often associated with the court interpreting and in some countries, uh, interpreter can do both. And in other countries, it's a strict separation between the community and the legal. The definition of the uh, legal and, uh, and uh, community depends on the setting. Here, the legal is official or formal and the, uh, the community is informal. For the medical interpreting here, we are focusing on the quality, as we mentioned, due to someone's life. This could lead to a risk of someone's life. Community interpreting here, we're focusing on the uh, medical sitting, the medical, of, the medical interpreting. We are focusing also on the quality interpreting as it's one of the utmost importance. Specialized training programs have been created. So normally here, there are supposed to be some specialized training programs in order to train the lecturer or to, sorry, to train the interpreter, how to interpret and how to behave and how to, to act in such kind of situation. What he need to interpret, what he should not interpret and what are the rules of interpreter he need to adhere to. Here we are going to speak about the philosophical approaches and why we should consider community interpreting as a separate entity from other interpreting settings. Active participation, interpreters are the only ones in control of both necessary linguistic and cultural elements. In face-to-face -face settings, the interpreter is an active third participant in the, in the communication event with the potential to influence both the direction and the outcome of the event. So this is very important. So here we community interpreting is generally, is generally considered more intrapersonal. It's more intrapersonal between person to person. Here we have also the kind of assistance. Community interpreting is considered more or less like other, like a social service. So community interpreting is considered more or less like a social service. You are providing a social service. Why it's considered like a social service? Because it's a social need. The people in the society, they need such kind of language services. It also develop among other social services. It, it keep developing from a, or among other social, social services. Before, there was no need for the, for the interpreter in these community services. However, now there is a huge need for community interpreter to provide services. Let's say, for example, someone who wants to go to GBJ office and 
he cannot understand the language. So he will be facing a lot of trouble there. He won't understand how to finish. Uh, GBJ here, we mean that kind of a Malaysian transportation system or Malaysian transportation office. Uh, also why it's considered important because it's still practiced mostly by volunteers. So normally community interpreting, as we mentioned earlier, it's mostly practiced by volunteers, volunteers interpreter. And also we, we need to mention here, community interpreter interpreting sometime, it could be provided for free of a charge because it's voluntarily, it's voluntarily. For example, for some charity houses or some charity organization, they might need some community interpreter, but they won't be able sometime to pay the salary or to pay the wage, either per hour or per day for the interpreter. So sometimes they might need voluntarily uh, uh, services from the, from the interpreter. So for the most part, the client are immigrants needing more than just linguistic aid. So here, sometimes they need more than just linguistic aids. They might need some cultural elements, some cultural background of the uh, client or of the, uh, the person who need your service. So you must understand what he means. For example, when he say, when he say to the immigration officers, I, uh, I, I was overstayed or I lost my passport because uh, I was a uh, having a family problem or my child just passed away. And during that funeral, I was doing the funeral and uh, preparing for the period of, of my child. So I consumed a lot of time and I forget that I would be uh, getting overstayed. So you have to consider the situation of the client here or the situation of the per this person and interpret it well to the officer in order to be a kind of, a, 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 not to be sympathized, but also you have to adhere to the biasness, not to be biased with either of the parties. Okay, here we go also to the rule of interpreter, which is one of the most important here. It's a cultural broker, cultural broker. So here you have to be a cultural broker. You have to break the culture between both parties. The client, for example, here, a client of community interpreting belongs invariably to a minority group whose culture, even more than language, is not understood by the majority group, which organizes and offers the service to which the client is entitled. So culture is an important factor in all kinds of interpreting, but in community interpreting is the factor. It is very, very important because normally in community interpreting, we are providing a kind of social service. So in the social service, we are going down to the level of the society. We will be com communicating and interacting with the people of the society. Sometimes they may not be professional people. Sometimes they may not be uh, speaking very professional language or very professional English. Sometimes they, they could be speaking a broken English or a broken Arabic or a broken Malay language. So you have to go down to their level in order to communicate with them a, 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 in a very good manner of communication. Sometimes as interpreter, you have to, uh, to go down to the interpreter and to the, the, to the person or to the client level in order to understand what he means by such word, what he means by such sentences. This is very important. So here it's mentioned also about the, the Ontario Ministry of Citizenship has renamed community interpreting as a culture interpreting. So they have uh, renamed the term from community into cultural. Why? Because community interpreting is a kind of 90% depending on the cultural elements during the interpretation. Advocacy also, one of the most important rules for the interpreter, the community interpreter is seen as a guide working in favor of their unprivileged client. 
So the community interpreter here advises a client about the rights and opinions in the situation, ensure that the client has all the relevant information and control the interaction. It challenges racially, culturally, prejudice statement or conclusions. So here we are mentioning also, we are mentioning here also that some warnings, this may pluralize, pluralize the situation and cause communication attempt to fail. So these are very important. These are very important. Advises the client about the rights and opinion in the situation ensure that the client has all relevant information and controls the interaction. It challenges racially, culturally prejudice statement or conclusion. This is very important. So as interpreter, you have to follow these kind of steps, these kind of guidelines, and also you suppose not to interfere your opinion or to give your opinion or your suggestion to the either parties to the client or to the other party you suppose not to give your opinion during the interpretation you suppose not to give suggestion or oh, i think for example i think we we need to do this not to do that because here you are interpreting you are just the middleman who is going to convey the message from language a to language b you are not a partner, you are not a participant in this conversation. So we as interpreter, we have to keep uh, following or keep understanding what is our rule in this situation. We are just interpreting and conveying the message in a professional way. So conciliation here, we are focusing a kind of, we are doing a kind of conciliation in order to do uh, something like a reformation between the client and uh, uh, the other party. So the function of the interpreter here is the function of the interpreter or the conciliator is performed more frequently than one might imagine without being defined as such. Interpreting and conciliating. So for the interpreter here, during the interpretation, he needs to consile emotions. You have to consile emotion, remain neutral, summarize accurately. As a professional interpreter, you suppose not by all means to, to interpret word per word or to exactly interpret what the speaker has spoken in details. You suppose not to do that. But the most important is you need to copy the message. So sometimes the, the speaker, he may speak for a few minutes, but most of his speech is not that important because he, he does not answer the question that the speaker asks. So he, he keep like going around here and there and at the end he answer the question. So as interpreter, you suppose not to do exactly as the speaker, but the most important, is if you can summarize accurately what the speaker, he speaks, you can do it. If you can summarize it, you can summarize it, but you, it must be accurately, meaning that you must not lose the main or the general idea of the speech that the, inter, the speaker he was giving. The general idea, it must be there. You have to interpret it. You have to deliver the message, what he means by this or what he, he answered. Additional skills also. So it could, there could be a, some kind of additional skills for the interpreter. Additional skills here, it's a kind of a note taking techniques. This is kind of additional skills for the interpreter. Soften or reward hard, harsh statements. This is also very important as interpreter. You have to uh, sometimes use some kind of a, a soften or rewording for the harsh words. For example, if someone he said, um, if, the, if the speaker he was speaking, for example, let's say the speaker he's a, from a foreign country 
and he's not belonging to any religion. He's speaking now to someone who's conservative, like he's a Christian, conservative Christian or conservative Muslim. He's asking, uh, for example, have you slept with someone before? Have you ever slept with someone before? So, or maybe he can ask like, do you have a sexual relation? Do you have a sexual relation with him before? So this is kind of harsh word could be to that person because he's a conservative. When you say, do you have a sexual relation? It's a kind of harsh word. So what you as interpreter here, you can, you can soften the word or you can reward this word, meaning that no need to, to say you have sexual relation. Have you been in love with him? So this is more accurate word and more proper. It's more proper, more appropriate word. Better than we say, do you have sexual relation? We can say, do you have, have you been in love with him? This is more proper word. This is a kind of conciliating where you need to do some rewarding for the harsh word. Or let's say, for example, the, uh, the speaker, he say, uh, I, I beat that guy because he told me a uh, F-U-C-K, let's say. So for you as interpreter, you, you should not repeat this word. Some conservative interpreter, he will not repeat it. Let's say for me personally, if I am in this situation, I will not repeat that word. But I, I will say, he told him, or he told him a very bad word. I cannot repeat it as interpreter. So here you have softened the word and reworded it. And you mention it, you mention that, the dialogue, what he mentioned that he told him a very bad word. And you uh, refrain from uh, pronouncing that word. This is your right as interpreter. You can do that. This is your right. But the most important uh, idea here, you have to mention it. No need to pronounce it again, but you have to mention it. Like he, he told me a very bad word. This sentence, very bad word, of course, it's related to F-U-C-K or other bad words from that family. So I will understand. This is the situation. How many minutes left? I'm not sure, but we just Okay, so we are going to, uh, to end up here and we will continue uh, in the next uh, video.